Hey everyone, now for something completely different. Uh, <laughs> it's Annette, of course it's Annette. Um, you know when you have to do something important like move and you're kind of getting ready for that and you find all these other things to do besides move, besides pack and everything? Don't worry, I'll get it done. So I took a little break today and I went to the bookstore. And uh, let me just bring this down a tad. And, uh, and I found a card for anybody that needs to see this. I found a card. You've got this, right? <laughs> Change. You've got this. And I also found a book. And I'm aware that today is the eve of Earth Day. So it's Earth Day Eve when I'm recording this. And... I'm not doing a psychic reading, but I'm reading from this book. And this is called Lobster Garden. <laughs> Clearly, it was written by people from this area. Allie Bryden, a children's book author and editor who grew up in a seaside town on the east coast of the USA. I wonder if she's from here, from, from Gloucester, where I am. Egg Keller, E.G. Keller, is the illustrator of the number one New York Times bestseller last week, Tonight with John Oliver, presents A Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo. He's a... He illustrated documentarian Ken Burns' New York Times bestselling book, Grover Cleveland, again, and he wrote and illustrated the picture book, Please, Please the Bees, a children's book. Anyway, I have not read it yet, and I decided I'd just make a video in honor of Earth Day of myself reading it to you, so I don't know what's in the book. It's kind of a children's book. It's very illustrated, so I'll, sh I'll hold up the pictures. So I hope you make yourself a cup of tea like I did. Or have a cocktail and just, you know, settle in. I'm going to read you Lobster Garden. Speak out against pollution with a wicked awesome Boston accent. <laughs> now, most of you know that I grew up here. And uh, my dad's from the Midwest, and I consciously... When I was growing up, I didn't want to have a thick accent, and I consciously pronounced my R's <laughs> and such. Um, but I'm going to read it to you with a real, like, Boston or Gloucester accent, okay? So here we go. And here's a little synopsis. Walter is a proud lobster, neat and tidy in every way. His greatest dream is winning the annual Swell Gardens Contest. But year after year, that honor always goes to his boisterous neighbor, Milton. One day, when heaps of garbage show up in their yards, the rival lobsters must join forces to save their beloved gardens from the trash floating down from above. But can these two crabby crustaceans work together before their gardens are covered in rubbish? We shall see. They told me at the bookstore that I, they want me to tag them when I read it to you all. Lobster Garden. Speak out against pollution with a wicked awesome Boston accent. Walter was a proud lobster. He's a blue one. His home, spotless. His style, straight out of crustaceans illustrated. His garden, a blooming paradise. There's his garden. Yes, Walter had, a, had quite the blue thumb. He was hip to the latest underwater gardening trends. Native kelps, ornamental grasses, rainbow algae. Ooh. This careful crustacean was meticulous in his maintenance. There he is measuring, measuring the grass. Walter had one big dream, to win the annual Swell Gardens Contest. <laughs> cute. He's really cute. <laughs> but 
But that honor always went to his next door neighbor, Milton. There's Milton. He always wins the garden contest. Milton was loud. He was chaotic, like some people I grew up around. And his garden just flowed with the tides. <laughs> the judges ate it up. They love it. Milton, the loud Milton. This year, Walter would be number one. But just as he was leveling his hedges, wham! Something fell. Holy whale poop! He knew exactly who was responsible. Yes, he did. I bet I know. Doesn't take a psychic. Of course, they worked it out like adults. Hey, Chowderhead, you missing some trash in that garbage garden of yours? <laughs> I was just about to ask you the same thing, Walter, you blue barnacle. Got any bright ideas about how some, something like that finds its way into my prize-winning sea flowers? You trying to sabotage me? He's mad. But it didn't stop. Walter woke every morning to another disgusting thing dropped in his once flawless garden. So did Milton. They were both getting it. Walter's sea grapes burst. Milton's phytoplank phytoplankton flipped, and not in the good way. Each blamed the other. All the while, both gardens filled with garbage. Wow, that's bad. Trash under the ocean, bad. Then, one particularly trashy afternoon... Rumble. Rumble, crumble, boom. Crash, shudder. The garbage mountain tumbled down. Woo! Wow, what a mess. Gonna have to pick it up. It's gonna be Earth Day. Clearly, things had gotten out of claw. <laughs> out of hand, out of claw. Thud. Look at all that trash. Oh my goodness, that's so dramatic. <laughs> Milt, I think we found the culprit, said Walter. How's about we get a look topside, said Walter. I was going to suggest the same thing, said Milton. Milton and Walter hightailed it to the surface to take a look around. What's going on up there that all this trash has fallen into their gardens? Maybe they're bonding over the experience. Aha! There is the culprit. The lobster boat chowder head. Chowder's head? <laughs> the lobster boat chowder's head. He's probably from Rockport. Probably. I think I passed that guy on my walk this morning. Milt, I got an idea how to solve what appears to be a mutual problem, said Walter. I guess they are kind of bonding. There are the lobster traps. Lobster pot hollow, it's called. There they are. They're playing in the trash. They're playing in the trash where their garden was. It's become a trash garden. It was the first time they agreed on anything. Walter and Milton eventually went back to doing what they did best. That's some prize-winning sea cabbage. Wicked excellent eelgrass. Oh, now they're praising each other. Oh, isn't that nice? They bonded. They found a common cause. Not everything changed. There's, there's a Milton's trophy. The sweetest garden. But one thing certainly did change. And together they wrote a note. 
to the lobster guy. Hey, chowderheads, enough with the garbage. W and M. Walton Milton. They wrote a note to the stupid lobster man. And that's the end of the story. <laughs> well, let me read this to you. Lobster knowledge. That was cute. They, they agreed on something and they became friends. Lobster knowledge. Worldwide water. Oceans cover more than 70% of our planet. That's a lot of water. Scientists estimate that about 1 million species of underwater creatures live in our oceans. From the smallest plankton to the largest blue whale. Most of Earth's living beings actually live underwater rather than on land. And more unique sea animals are discovered all the time, such as a rare blue lobster like Walter. Have you ever seen a clawed lobster like our friends Walt and Milt before? Lobsters are crustaceans, meaning they have a hard outer shell called an exoskeleton. They also have ten legs that are jointed or bendy at the point in the middle. Two of those legs have large, super strong claws, which lobsters use to crush and tear apart fish to eat. Their bodies are about 10 to 20 inches long and end in a flat tail. The blue lobster, like Walter, is rare to find. Its blue color comes from a genetic mutation that makes them produce more of a certain protein. Underwater life. In this story, Walter and Milton live in the ocean and grow some pretty spectacular gardens there filled with kelp, eelgrass, sea cabbage, and more. These plants are not only beautiful, but also helpful to those of us who live up on land. Did you know that sea plants make half of the oxygen that humans breathe? The ocean is a wild and wonderful place, home to creatures you may already know, like lobsters, fish, whales, and sharks and some that seem too strange to be true. For example, have you ever heard of a vampire squid, mantis shrimp, or mimic octopus? Go check them out, they're amazing. Our oceans are colorful, vital, and diverse ecosystems, and we cannot live without them. But just like in Walter and Milton's fi fictional ocean home, humans pollute Earth's oceans daily. Billions of pounds of garbage and other pollutants go into the ocean each year. From single-use plastic to leaking oil and detergents to carbon emissions and even noise pollution, humans are responsible for much of the ocean's decline and our under-the-sea friends are at risk. How can you help Walter Milton and their neighbors reduce and or recycle the plastic that you use? Help clean up a coastline. Don't pour anything but water down the drain. Ask your parents or your children to buy and cook fish that are sustainably sourced. Keep learning about the state of our oceans. And most importantly, talk about ocean care and conservation with your friends and get them on board too. These organizations are doing good things for Earth's oceans. Ocean Conservancy, oceanconservancy.org. Plastic Pollution Coalition, PlasticPollutionCoalition.org, Ocean Preservation Society, OPSociety.org, Oceana is Oceana.org, and the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch is SeafoodWatch.org. All right. And uh, you may have noticed that Walter and Milton talk a certain way. These lobsters hail from New England off the coast of Boston, Massachusetts, to be exact. So they've picked up the famous Boston accent, which is a blend of accents from Britain, from English settlers in the 1600s. Gloucester, where I lived, live is set, was settled in 1623. And Ireland, from Irish immigrants in the 1800s. The Boston accent and slang are particular to the city of Boston, but the rest of New England boasts variations on this accent. If you want to speak like Walt and Milt, here are some tips. Say the letter R like ah. <laughs> you can also add an R to the end of certain words like, like drama for drama. When the O sound appears in the middle of a word, say it like ah as in spots. <laughs> and so on and so forth. And there's the... Uh, the story of Lobster Garden. 
Thank you for joining me for our little Earth Day story. And if you uh, if you're on tomorrow night, join me for our uh, Psychic News Network. All right, it was fun. Have a good night. Namaste.